Hello friend, welcome to my channel. Oh my gosh, this heat is going to make me lose my mind. It is probably the worst heat we've had in Texas since I can remember and I've been here since 99 and this heat is just crazy pants, but my to-do list still gotta go on. And uh, this week we are going to attempt to start the new table project for the office. So let's recap what that is going to be. Okay, so the last I mentioned the table project was actually just two episodes ago. And this is the current corner in the office where I used to do my work and kind of the roofing is kind of taken over. That's gonna go away soon. Well, soon is relative because out there behind the door, there's still some area of our compound that uh, we're actually gonna be building a an office specifically for the roofing. So that'll eventually go away, relatively speaking. But this corner, while at one time was kind of cute, you know, it's just not as functional as I need it to be. And it's not very inviting. Like you walk in and you got two desks shoved together and you know, more roofing material and it could just be so much cuter. Plus it would give us a, an opportunity to have a dining table available if we needed it. So I don't use a second monitor anymore, so I will put that up in storage and I most likely will deconstruct this desk so that I can keep the actual file cabinet part because that's kind of important to have. And the lamp will stay, TV stays on the wall, uh, we're here a lot. And then this little writing desk will go back into inventory. So I want to bring in a dining table for this area so that we have a place to work because right now I am using a farm table out in the studio, which is climate controlled, but not like the smaller office space. And this is command central for the roofing business. And um, yeah, I'd like to be in the cooler AC when I need to be. And this just works a little bit better. So the goal and the idea is to put a dining table in there and get rid of those desks so it kind of flows better. So over here in the warehouse, so these are a lot of the project pieces. I've got these guys going in for upholstery, these guys going in for upholstery eventually, and both of these are projects. So here's the dining table that I'm gonna be using. And we're going to actually change the legs. In my mind, we're gonna change the legs. We are going to make sure that works before I cut the legs off but I still need to refinish the table, the tabletop part. And I have a leave that goes in it, which I have actually outside right now because I am not using the mahogany stain. We're gonna sand it all the way down and see what we have to work with. I realize that this has a veneer on it just by looking at the insert. So we'll see what happens when I sand that down, but this is gonna get new life, and that is what this project is all about. I'm gonna pop up the inspiration for the table so you can get an idea. There's a table at Anthropology currently that they sell that uh, is kind of this style that I'm going for, um, but I probably, I don't know. We're gonna see what happens and where this DIY project goes, but let's get to it. Because I'm antsy, and it's still a million degrees outside. I have that little leaf insert already outside and I just need to grab, I think actually, oh, yep, nope, right here. Grab my sander and I've got a 60 grit sandpaper on this thing and uh, we're gonna go outside and get set up and see, see what happens. I'm just gonna go sweat in the sun. Ooh, look at that, bright sun. Fix the light camera, fix the light, okay. 
Okay, so I have sanded down a good bit of this and uh, this actually is underneath the veneer. So this is the veneer layer and it's still way too orange. So I thought about doing a marble paint treatment on top of this and that may still happen, but I want to see what the wood condition is once I strip this all the way down to the veneer. So I still have about an eighth, maybe a sixteenth of an inch to get all the way down to this blonde wood. But you can see this has had, you know, water damage. You can see that the veneer right here, this is the layer that I'm trying to uh, lift up. If I show you the underside of this, you'll see that the underside even has a veneer layer on it. Um, and you can see it has water damage and is lifted. And I'm not too concerned about this layer. I, I could rip it off and not, not be bothered, but that's not the layer that's gonna be seen. This layer is, so this is the area that I haven't sanded. This is the area that I've recently stripped and then this is me working to get down to the original wood layer underneath that veneer layer because there's really no good way to get this off because it is so old that the areas where I can just strip, you can see the glue Probably kind of hard to see see the glue that uh, was used to seal this down but this this means nothing this means nothing so I'm gonna keep going sweating my tushy off and uh, see what this looks like once it's all the way down to just the blonde wood underneath it okay I'm pretty sure I need to uh, change clothes holy moly it's hot so okay here is where we are this section is all the way to the original wood piece actually i lied it is not i can still see that it is the veneer wow we're gonna show you that i still have at least an eighth of an inch to go which may mean we do the treatment I thought about doing. Anyway, so this is the actual original wood. That veneer is still fairly thick. Um, I don't know if we'll find it, but anyway, oh, there it goes. You see, don't watch me. There you go, still pretty thick. So, I saw a tutorial, I'm gonna have to go find it again, on creating a marble effect. And I actually might do this with countertop stuff. I've seen a couple of DIY bloggers and influencers do marbling on their countertops. So I might attempt to do that. I saw somebody do that with paint. Uh, I'm just trying to come up with the best solution for how often it's going to be used so keeping that in mind I know I could paint it but ultimately it's still a decision to be made so that is what is next and making that decision the other thing to this particular thing is that I'm gonna to have to figure out what to do with the edges uh, this is going to be seen, this edge and the other edge. And if we go back over to the actual table itself, so let's go do that. So if we walk back over to the table itself, there's still quite a lot to contend with that would take sanding. And I don't have any qualms about sanding things like all of this can be sanded with no issue so I'm, I'm not worried about that part the part that I'm worried about is if I salvage the feet so let's just get comfy down here on the floor if I salvage the legs then they have to be sanded or painted as well and the goal is to not use these legs. The goal is to make this kind of a pillar style table. The other thing to making this a pillar style table 
is how exactly I am going to do that for this. So if I remove these legs, which is doable, I don't know what this little piece was for, honestly. Might have to do some research. But what I could do in order for the new pillar style legs to work is cutting, we're going sideways here, cutting this right at this line. Same thing with this one. And then putting a table, uh, a piece of wood, kind of a platform inside there to give me a platform to put these colander legs on. Colander, cylinder, cylinder legs. So the pillars. And that actually might be the better option because I need them to, they're gonna be fairly large pillars and they are gonna need to attach to something. So if I, I can make them as tall as I want them. So I can actually, once I take these legs off or make that decision to cut them off and I place a piece of board underneath here, then I can have something to attach those guys to, which might be the best thing for everybody involved. So next steps are figuring out if I'm gonna sand, basically scuff this down so that I can paint it, scuff it down so that I can put a marble treatment on it like your countertops or sand it all the way down to kind of the bleach wood it was kind of a second option if I don't come up with the right process for the marbling effect. So this I can already tell since we just learned together that there is still veneer on this that uh, I will be able to figure out if this is still a good piece of viable wood that I can take all the way down to its original color, whatever that might be. Hopefully it's blonde. I can tell this is a very cheap piece of veneer. I mean, you can see the, the damage from just over time, uh, water penetrations, etc. So if I can get past that, which is still an option for this process, then we might be able to figure out if this is usable, if I go that far. So that is where we are right now in the land of figuring this out. So I'm gonna go do some research and I will be back to let you know what I decided. Okay, so here is the update on the direction I've decided to go with the table. So uh, the sanding, that's just not going to be feasible. So what we're gonna be doing is painting the entire table and then I'm going to do a marble treatment on it with just paint and then we're gonna seal it with either shellac or I'm going to seal it with some kind of resin. So I've seen two or three different types of sealers in tutorials. So I've gotta do some more research to figure out what is the best option to go for. Ultimately, I need it to withstand normal everyday activity and not be too time intensive and not to be too costly because we like to do things on a shoestring budget around here and uh, I don't really want to spend a lot of money. I watched one YouTube tutorial that their epoxy kit was like $300 and I was like, oh, this is not a $300 table. So um, then I found some other tutorials and so we're just going to wing it. That's what I do best. And uh, so first steps, is to get it ready to paint. So I need to make room to be able to do this in this area and uh, pull the TP out of the way. And then I need to move this dresser. So I'm gonna work in this area. Eventually I gotta get all of this put up. This stuff is kind of for sale. This is kind of like the hodgepodge area and it's not very functional. <laughs> Things kind of come over here and don't go anywhere. So I've got some farm tables that need to be um, 
shored up. I've got to get this backdrop up in the air. This actually happens to be the Ferris wheel backdrop. I need it on display so that people can see the, that we do custom work. And um, this is definitely a project piece, so I just need to uh, find a, another home for it. Ooh-wee, forgot how heavy she was. Okay, so I need to clean up this area and I need to get my rolly feet so I can maneuver this around out of the way. I gotta get a drop cloth down and uh, then we're gonna get to work on prepping this paint and then also still trying to figure out how I'm going to handle the feet. It's the feet. Not, not too keen on the way it is right now and I would really like to do that column effect. So let's get going. So prep work is complete. So I end up using some of this prep and etch after I finished sanding. The holes that I needed to fill in are filled in. I went ahead and pulled the extra leaf out because I'm gonna go ahead and spray this, but I needed to do it in phases because there are several drop leaves on this table and then the extension goes in and I just wanna make sure that I get everything fully covered it is ready to go so stay tuned for next steps because this thing is gonna be transformed okay so i need to wait until it cools down sun goes down there's just no way to do any kind of painting in 100 degree weather outside like it will just probably dry before it ever hits the actual table which is a problem <laughs> so I'm gonna have to wait until the sun sets and uh, to get it set up for paint. I wish I could spray it inside. That is just not feasible. I don't have a spray booth. I kind of wish I had one of those pop-up tents. Might be something to uh, consider, especially with the weather that we're having. That seems to be something that we will be having for quite some time. So while I wish I could have better weather so that I could spray this outside, it will just have to be something that I do when the sun sets. So I gotta get that figured out. So I wait because it's still daylight outside. Actually, it's 3.54. I got quite some time before it's undaylight. And I've got other things to do around the shop. I've got some things to list for sale that uh, are just random things to list for sale. And I got to work on my husband's YouTube. He has a channel called Dad and Chad where they do adventure things. Right now they're building an airplane. And uh, so I got to go work on his YouTube. And I got to work on my YouTube and all the other things going on. Before I go, I do want to remind you I wrote a book. It's a business book. It's called Pillars and Purpose, How to Build a Business That Works for You. And it's perfect for those that are in business currently who have been in business for a while and also those wanting to either start a new business or just start a business to begin with. And you can check it out on Amazon. Go to bossgirlcreative.com forward slash pillars book. I'll link it down in the description. And uh, I would be so grateful for your support Writing a book is a big deal, and uh, publishing a book is a big deal. So I did both, and uh, yeah. So until next week, uh, hopefully I'll be back with uh, another update on the table. Always lots going on over here at the House of Sugar Creek. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. I will have a bubble pop up right over here that uh, is a picture of my face. Uh, so click that to subscribe, turn on the notifications so that you never miss an episode. And until next time, I hope you have a great rest of this week.
Oh, hey, but before I go, just real quick, I have a shop that you can shop from. It's called The Tailored Home, and all of the items that you see here are for sale. You can shop through my Instagram, at The Tailored Home, T-A-Y-L-O-R-D, Home, or you can shop through the Sugar Creek website, which is sugarcreekeventrentals.com forward slash shop. We have a ton of glassware available shipping quotes are available so you are going to just see the pricing for the physical item if you would like a shipping quote before you purchase just shoot me a message and say hey i need shipping to blah 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 zip code so i can get you a quote the plant babies are for sale but they don't ship because i have no clue how to do that so if you're local to me in the dfw area i have beautiful plant babies for sale this is a donkey tail this is a cactus this is a panda plant it's thrive they're all thriving y'all thanks to the app planta this is a bird's nest fern they all are about to get baths snake plant air plant i've got a couple of those ponytail palms i got a couple of those i've got a another palm up there that's a parlor palm but I have all this fun stuff available that you can shop through my website. Again, it's all linked down in the description. Hats, I got encouragement cards. I have great smelling candles available. You don't wanna miss it. So go shopping. Mm -hmm.